Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to Wednesday 2B session. Okay, and so the first talk will be of the session will be given by Kuo Chin Chen on quantum complexity of testing sign and graphical stability. So please. Thanks for the nice introduction and uh, thank you all for coming. And I'm Guo Jin Chen, I'm from uh, Honghai Research Institute in Taiwan. And it is a joint work with uh, Min Xiu Xie from uh, Honghai Research Institute and uh, Simon Eppers from IRF in Paris. So let's begin with the online. Uh, first, I will introduce the problem, the cluster ability testing problem, and I will show our two main results. The first result is that we provide a quantum, a quantum algorithm to solve the testing problem. And our second result is that we provide a classical query load bound for this problem. So let's begin the first part. So sine graph. What is a sine graph? A sine graph is a graph uh, whose each edge is assigned uh, positive or negative. As we can see from this figure, uh, we use the, the green line to indicate the positive, uh, positive edge and use the red line to indicate the negative one. And if we uh, have the sine graph, we call uh, 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 this graph is classical if we can decompose it into several components, such that uh, the positive edge connects uh, uh, vertexes in the same component, while the negative one connects uh, vertex, vertexes belong to distinct components. So as we can see, this graph is classical. However, if we change the uh, sign of single single edge, then the graph becomes non-classable. That is to say, if we would like to uh, learn the classability of a sign graph in an exact manner, it's, it is necessary to make a big of n queries to the graph, since we have to learn the, the information of all edges. So uh, the question is that whether we can do better in sublinear sub time uh, so in uh, in an approximate man, man, in an approximated manner. So this is the uh, web property testing problem. So we call uh, uh, an the randomized algorithm for solving this problem as the web property tester, and the tester takes two inputs. The first input is the query access to this web and since we are considering the bounded degree query model, so we can make a query access to the adjacent list. And we denote the maximum degree by D and the number of vertex by capital N. And the second input is an error parameter we call is epsilon. And the target of this tester or this randomized algorithm is to determine uh, the given graph is uh, epsilon far from this property or not. So the epsilon far from this prop property means that we have to remove or add at least epsilon and the edges to make this graph sat sat satisfy this property. And in this case, the algorithm uh, return reject. Otherwise, uh, for example, if the graph satisfy this property or we just have to remove, remove uh, very few edge to turn the web status by this property. In that case, the algorithm return a set. Okay. And, okay. Here I show some previous work and the, the open problem. We take the two famous, famous uh, web property uh, as an uh, example, uh, we can find the bipartanist testing and expander testing. Uh, the, the classical query complexity is settled by Goris and Dana around 20 years ago. And uh, Ambinus, uh, Charles, and uh, Liu 
proposed the quantum algorithm for this t testing problem and claimed the quantum advantage. And the, the, the quantum algorithm have the uh, the time comp so the time complexity for the of the uh, quantum algorithm is n to the one third. However, for the cluster VLT testing, we got a uh, limited work on that. Address and efforts uh, provide a classical algorithm to 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 test the cluster VLT, and uh, the performance is square root of n. However, we do not know the classical algorithm is optimal or not. And furthermore, we do not have any quantum advantage on this problem. So our contribution is first, we uh, provide the classical query low bound, which implies this uh, classical algorithm is near optimal. And our second contribution is we show a quantum advantage for this problem by providing a n to the one third uh, quantum algorithm. Let's begin with the first part, the algorithm. Okay. We begin is by introducing the Casco cluster BLT te tester proposed by Simon in 2021. And okay, the, the algorithm is simple. First, uh, the algorithm have to select uh, a, a, a vertex in the graph and, uh, and uh, implement square root of n random walks from the vertex. And uh, the edge in the walks is positive. And uh, the length of each walk it has, uh, is polynomial of uh, inverse uh, the precision parameter. And the algorithm so and the, the, the tester aims to find a negative edge connecting uh, the, the, the positive works. And once we found such a negative edge, the main theory of this paper show that okay, the, the graph is absolutely far from classical with high probability. And we actually uh, turn the classical quantum algorithm into the uh, into the quantum one by replacing the binding procedure by the quantum collision finding algorithm. And therefore we have the quantum advantage on, uh, so, so we can outperform the, 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 the classical algorithm. And the, the result is we got uh, n to the one third uh, class, uh, uh, query complexity outperform this classical one. And for the second part, I would like to introduce the classical query low bound. So this is the main theory. Uh, any classical uh, class, cluster VLT tester require at least square root of n queries. So this is the main theory of this work. Um, in order to prove uh, this query low bound, the idea is to decide a hard instance so the hard instance contains uh, two set of graph. One is G1 and another is G2, such that okay, all the graph in G1 are classical. And the uh, most graph in G2 are epsilon far from classical with high probability. And we know we have two uh, set of graph with very distinct uh, clusterability property and uh, in the following lemma, we will show that G1 and G2 cannot be distinguished within square root of n queries uh, with high probability. And of course, in classical, uh, in, the, in a classical machine. So let's begin the first part, the lemma, the first lemma. Okay. To begin with the first name, uh, let me introduce what's the graph in G1, okay? The graph in G1, uh, sorry, each graph in G1 contain uh, capital N vertexes and uh, the capital N is an, uh, is an even number. And we can assign uh, uh, the parity for, e for, each, for each vertex. It can be even or can be odd. 
and that's for the vertex set. And for the edge set, uh, the edge set contain three edge subsets. Okay, and for the first edge subset, it is it is a Hamiltonian cycle with negative edge, and there is one constraint for this for the Hamiltonian cycle. The edge can only be allowed to connect vertexes with distinct parity. So this is the constraint for the, the first edge of set. And the for, for the second edge, edge subset, it contains two perfect matching, which means uh, the edge can connect to exact two uh, vertexes, okay, for each vertex. And uh, all of the edge in the second uh, edge subset is positive. And we, we, hope we have one constraint for, for this edge set. The, uh, the edge can be only allowed to connect vertex, vertexes with the same parity. And we have the same setting for the third one, okay? And we can see that the, the graph in G1 set uh, are all classable. Since we can easily decompose the graph in G1 into two components, and each component can contain a vertex with the same parities. So it satisfies the definition of clusterability. So we have our statement here. Okay, every graph in G1 are all classable. And for the G2, for the uh, graph in G2, we have a similar setting, except that we do not assign parity for each vertex. And uh, uh, we make a change on the side of the, the, of the, the edges. For the first edges, uh, for the first, first set of edges, it's also a Hamiltonian cycle, and they are all positive. And for the second one, they are all negative. They are, uh, it, and it's contained two perfect matching. And for the third one, they are all positive, okay? And we would like to show that a graph satisfy in this setting uh, are uh, far from classical with a high probability, okay? Next, we will show how to, how to just justify it. Uh, but we, we can first uh, observe that uh, every graph in G2 is not classable. Why is that? Since we have to consider, if, if we consider the, the set of graph, uh, uh, so the set of edge E1, it's, it is a positive uh, Hamiltonian cycle and it connects each ver vertex into one component. So, uh, yeah, for, for each graph in G2, we can only have one component when we considering the clusterability. However, for we, we have the edge set E2, so which means we have one component and we have a lot of uh, negative edge in the component, which is which violates the definition of clusterability. So in order to make the graph classable, we have to remove some uh, edge in E1 or the, the, the cycle edges. Uh, since we, 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 we do not really have to uh, consider removing the, the negative edges, seems uh, if we would like to do so, we have to remove all of them, right? So, so now we only consider removing some edges in E1. So, since we cannot remove that many of edges in E1, we can remove at most epsilon nd edges in E1. So it will induce uh, epsilon nd uh, components on the cycle. So, and next we would like to consider the third set of edge, E3. We can show that even if we remove that many edge in E3, Okay, the E3 connects this cycle component with high probability, which means if we only consider the E1 and the E3, we can only have one component, even if we remove that many of, 
edges from E E one and E E three. So the graph uh, set, uh in in G two uh is far from it's so far from cusper with the with high probability and uh, the first lemma follows. So next, I would like to show uh, the uh, the uh, uh, no no cusp algorithm within a uh, square root root of n queries can distinguish the graph in G one and G two, and of course with high probability. So what do we mean distinguish? First, we uh, sample a graph in G one or G two uniformly. And the algorithm could make a query to the sampled graph, and which means uh, the algorithm could learn square root of n edges from the sampled graph. And then there are two conditions. The first condition is that we cannot find any cycle, which means uh, the algorithm cannot distinguish uh, G1, the, the graph is in G1 or G2, since Okay, uh, for each query, the graph always answer a new vertex. So in that case, of course, the algorithm cannot say anything about the, the, the graph. Okay. And for the another case, if we can find, so if the algorithm can find a cycle, and we can show that uh, the probability for, for, for this case can be bounded by one over 10. It's quite similarly to the collision finding. And uh, yeah, with this observation, we have this lemma. So in summary, combining this uh, lemma, we have the desired uh, classical query low bound. And I give a brief summary and the, the open problem. Um, First, we, we, we of course, uh, we claim the quantum advantage on testing cast durability, and which means no any classical algorithm could outperform the quantum algorithm as mentioned. And a natural question is that the, quant uh, the, the quantum algorithm is optimal or not? And the answer is we have no idea since we do not have quantum query low bound for the cluster BLT testing problem. Uh, according to pre previous uh, literature, we can find one for expander testing and uh, the query low bound is n to the one fourth. And of course, it is not tight since the, the, the best expander tester can uh, the query complexity n to the one third. Therefore, it is not a tight uh, lower bound. So I think that's all. Thanks for the listening. Uh, so thank you for, in, for interesting talk. So any questions? Okay, so um, I have a question. Um, so you study clusterability problem, and so you don't uh, care about the number of clusters. Does it make any sense to maybe some limitations on the number of clusters that you are introducing? You mean the cast, ca the definition of the clusterability? Yeah, just right. just yeah, just a different problem when you have. Yeah, uh, we don't care how many cluster we can find, but we once we can. Of course, there, there can be many cluster proportional to capital N, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, once we can find such a cluster, then it is classable. Yeah. OK, thank, thank you. you. So maybe any questions? OK, so uh, if no questions, then let's thank the speaker again. Okay, thank you.